Sea Breeze is a classic amusement park in Rochester, New York adjacent to Irondequoit Bay. Its biggest claim to fame is that it's the fourth oldest operating amusement park in the United States, and unsurprisingly, it has retained that old school charm. So in this video, I will review Sea Breeze and explain why families and amusement park historians alike need to check this park out. Sea Breeze opened back in 1879 along Lake Ontario. At first, it was mostly a picnic ground, but it slowly grew into an amusement park. They built a series of wood coasters in the early 1900s, one of which still operates as the park's signature coaster today in Jack Rabbit. This rise the longest continuously operating roller coaster in the country. The park struggled through the 1920s and 1930s due to a series of fires and the Great Depression, but they survived and renamed themselves Dreamland. The park would go by this name until 1975, when they reverted their name back to the original one in Seabreeze, and the park has gone by that ever since. The park is roughly halfway between Syracuse and Buffalo, making a nice pit stop off of I-90, but many people vacation in this area anyway. And if you're local to the Rochester area, you can access this park using the city bus line. If you arrive by car, you can park in a large free lot. The park doesn't have too many tall rides, but you get the best shots of Jackrabbit from here. Seeing the out and back layout running alongside the parking lot gets you hyped up for your day. As of 2023, admission will cost you roughly $40 a person. This gives you access to all the amusement rides and the attached Raging Rivers Water Park. I think this is a fair price for what the park has to offer. Seabreeze oozes old school charm. The park has that classic amusement park vibe to it. No theming, but the midways are clean and rides are colorful. Then the tallest rides in the back areas of the park offer stunning views overlooking the bay. This park is such a nice atmosphere, and it's only heightened by the friendly employees. This is a park where you can take it easy. It's not the largest park at just 35 acres in size, and the layout is simple. It forms a reverse T. Most rides are in a long strip parallel to the parking lot towards the front of the park. Then the last few rides in the water park extend back towards the water. Whenever I've visited this park on summer weekdays, crowds have been manageable. I have never had to wait more than 15 to 20 minutes for any of the amusement rides, and usually, I've waited much less than that. The park does caution guests visiting on summer weekends that the park can hit capacity, so I would arrive early those days just in case. Seabreeze typically opens at 11am. Half the rides open with the park, the other half open an hour later. If you arrive at opening, I'd probably prioritize bobsleds early because that is their lowest capacity ride and that if you're interested in the water park, do that before it starts to fill up. While the coasters don't have the highest capacities, the staff members will load them as quickly as possible so the lines at least move at a steady, albeit slow rate. But that's fine for the crowd levels this park typically sees. Now let's jump into the ride lineup. Seabreeze caters mostly towards families and their attractions reflect that. The park currently has four different roller coasters. The biggest of the bunch is Jack Rabbit. Designed by John Miller, this ride recently celebrated its 100th birthday and it's still running strong. It is a very smooth coaster for its age and it offers an enjoyable experience too. Several hills offer pops of airtime and the unbanked turns offer some laterals too. Then this coaster is a fun tunnel at the end with a surprise ending. I have an entire review going more in depth but it's the main reason coaster enthusiasts will want to visit this park. The park's most unique coaster may be bobsleds. This may have been the first hybrid conversion as the park owner transformed their old junior coaster back in the 1960s. The experience reminds me of an old galaxy coaster. Its biggest strength is the charm. You ride in these small vehicles and the layout wraps around a giant oak tree. No notable elements per se, just some mild drops and turns but it is a one-of-a-kind ride you will not find elsewhere, and I state that in my review. Whirlwind may be the park's most thrilling coaster. This is a standard Mauer SC2000 spinning coaster, but this one has minimal trim brakes and spins more than usual. I was spinning like a top for the final two-thirds of the layout, but the highlight is still the start. You get a fantastic view of the bay, followed by a sizable drop that's particularly great if you experience it backwards. The final coaster is Bear Tracks. This is a well-landscaped Mylar Kitty coaster. If you want the credit, just know you'll need to accompany a child. On that note, this park has Kitty City towards the center of the park. 
This is a cluster of attractions exclusively for kids, so it's easy for them to jump from ride to ride. For the adult flat rides, you have a fine collection of spinning rides. Some are old school classics, while others are more modern. Then you have a few pendulum rides. The best of the bunch is Screaming Eagle. This inverting pendulum is the park's only ride to take you upside down. This one rotates slowly, so it's light in the positive G's, but it offers good hang time over the top. Another ride worth highlighting is the park's carousel. After a 1994 fire burned down their old carousel, the park built their own from scratch with hand-carved horses and a classic band organ. It is a beauty, and the area around the attraction serves as a museum of sorts with all the park's history on these displays. One gap in the park's lineup is the lack of a dark ride. The park used to have a ghost train, but it was damaged beyond repair in that 1994 fire. The park only has one water ride, but I think it's their best overall attraction. The log flume is a simple, but scenic course, and it ends with a shockingly wild final plunge. It reused the structure for the old Over the Falls ride, and it has a 55 degree angle, making it one of the steepest drops of any flume. You get a nice pop of air time on the way down, especially because there's no restraints. Moving on to the water park, you have a series of tube slides. The best of the bunch is the Helix Tube Bowl Slide. The park used to have an awesome body slide named Banzai Pipeline. This was a super steep 5 story tall speed slide with some good air time, but it was removed and replaced in 2011 for the more family friendly Hydro Racer Mat Slide. The rest of the water park has some gentler attractions such as a lazy river and a wave pool. Then kids have a dedicated water play area with sprayers and smaller slides. Beyond the rides, there is a stage near the main entrance. What type of show you'll get depends on the day. Sometimes it'll be a gymnastic show, other times it'll be a musical one. I haven't gotten too much food at Seabreeze because there's a lot of eateries near the park, but I've gotten a few snacks. They're average in quality and reasonably priced for an amusement park. How much time you'll need depends on your interests. I can comfortably do everything I want at Seabreeze in a half day. This gives me time to get a few laps on the coasters and their best non-coasters too. And then I can just soak up the atmosphere. I could see families wanting a full day though, especially if they plan to spend a few hours in the water park. But if you only care about the coasters, you can probably do everything in an hour or two. So do I recommend Seabreeze? Yes I do. This is New York's most charming park. I love the look and feel of this park. Then you have some solid rides too several of which are older or unique. I think this is the best park in northern New York for families. If you purely want thrills, your best bet in the area is Six Flags Darien Lake. So those are my thoughts about Seabreeze in Rochester, New York. What are your thoughts about this classic park? Do you enjoy it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos, here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.